Johnny Dollar. Paul Ferris here. Ferris. That's right. And where is here? New York City. Oh, yeah. Worldwide mutual insurance. Right. Well, hi, Paul. I haven't talked to you since that little problem with Tony Valentine. Well, then you remember him. Are you kidding? When that little punk found out I was on his trail, he made a lot of big talk about getting me before I could get him. Yeah, I know, Johnny. I finally turned him over to the police there in your fair city. He started making with the threats all over again. But as long as he's safely behind the bars now... Uh, he was, Why Johnny, worry about but... him? What's the... What did you say? I said Tony Valentine was behind bars. But a few days ago, he and a con named Sandy Reinhardt broke out of that little upstate prison. No kidding. A couple of nights ago, they pulled a red light robbery on a dark side street right here in the middle of the city. Tony's old racket, huh? Yeah. And to top things off, they pulled a gun and killed the driver of the car they'd stopped. A man named Barton Osborne. Tony Valentine is not a killer. Well, one of them did it. Well, why call on me, Paul? Isn't this a police matter? Osborne is, or was, one of our policyholders. Oh, I see. A policy for close to $75,000. So when the heirs tell us to get on the ball, we get on the ball. Also, Johnny, since you know Valentine, you know his tricks and how to handle him. Okay. I'll see what I can do. The CBS Radio Network brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company, New York City office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the two's a crowd matter. So Tony Valentine, one of the original red light bandits, was on the loose again. The case I thought I'd solved a couple of years ago was far from closed, especially now with a killing involved. But before getting into the old expense account, let me tell you the rest of my conversation with Paul Ferris of the insurance company. Now, now, wait a minute, No, Paul. In spite of his threats to me, Tony Valentine never had a reputation as a killer. Nonetheless, Johnny... Sure, he'd drive around at night, flashing red light at expensive-looking cars, posing as the highway patrol. When they stopped him, he'd wave a pistol at them. But he was never known to pull the trigger. Well, then maybe the police theory is right. That the killing was done by Sandy Reinhardt, the kind of escape with him. What police, Paul? Well, when you get down here, contact Lieutenant Randolph Singer. Randy Singer, 18th Precinct? That's right. Well, fine. He's an old pal of mine. He'll be able to give you far more detail than I can. Right, Paul. I'm on my way. (laughs) Expense account item one. Eight dollars plane fare to New York. Item two, 650 cab fare into 18th Precinct Police Headquarters. And when I barged in on him, Lieutenant Randy Singer raised his hands in mock horror. Oh, no. No, no, not you again. Hi, Randy. You mind if I sit down? Well, I do if you're down here on account of Tony Valentine. How did you guess? Johnny, why don't you leave these things to us, hmm? I mean, just because you happen to be lucky in tapping Valentine once before and without getting your head shot off... Lucky, huh? What else? How else did you ever solve any of those wacky insurance cases? Sheer luck, that's all. <laughs> Randy, maybe you have a point there. Sure, sure. I mean, just because none of our boys could find him and you just happened to stumble over him. And bring him in for you on a silver platter. I wish you had, Johnny, all neatly stuffed with lead. And we wouldn't have to be out hunting for him again. Only, Johnny, the one we really want bad is Sandy Reinert. Because he did the killing. You sure of that? Absolutely. He's the one that had the gun that helped them engineer their escape out of the pen. I see. And one of my boys found that gun down a sewer near the scene of the holdup just a little while ago. Reinert's fingerprints all over it. No prints of Tony. Any leads on either of them, Randy? Well, a man answering Tony's description is known to have taken a plane to Oklahoma City within a few hours of the caper. A man of his description. Yeah. And when I showed this photo with Tony to the clerk at the airline, she was positive it was the same man. So I formally requested that a warrant and a copy of this be sent out there so if they see him, they can pick it. Oh. Yeah, what is it, Conroy? Special for you, Lieutenant. Oh, okay, thanks. Now, let's see what this is. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said Oklahoma. Yeah, that's right. Well, what's the matter with you, Randy? 
plenty, but that's beside the point. No, listen, don't you remember? That's where Tony was to go when I latched onto him before. Overton, Oklahoma. Overton? Oh, yeah. And I still think that's where he stashed a lot of the loot from some of his earlier jobs. Well, maybe I better get that out to him. I'll send him a full report. All right, you send him a report, Randy. And you can also tell him that's where they'll find me. You're going out to Oklahoma? Right. And I'm taking along this photo of Tony. Now, listen, Tony. If I'm lucky, if I make good plane connections, I'll be there by the time you mail your report. So, Randy... Will you wait? Now, look at this. Hmm? This note that Conroy... Yeah, just listen, huh, Johnny? Yeah, Sergeant Mike Thomason, detective detail at the station... Never over... heard of him. Well, you should have from your insurance company. Why? Because he's a nephew of that old man who was killed. Oh, so he stands to share in the old man's will, his insurance. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. That's beside the point. Is it? The point is that Mike doesn't know Sandy Reinitz, the killer, that he's been picked up. He has? Yeah. Yeah, you see? Right here in this special. Yeah, I see him. In the meantime, what has he done? Uh, he being Mike, the police sergeant. He being Mike, the police sergeant. Well? Taken a couple of weeks off, and he's gone out to Oklahoma. I mean, following that tip from the airline. Now, get this, Johnny. Mike is one of the deadliest shots on the force, and he's crazy mad about that murder. You mean that if he gets out there and finds Tony before I do... He'll kill him for sure. I mean that, Johnny. Mike's a good cop, but he's too worked up over this. And if he still thinks Tony may have killed that uncle of his... Well, go ahead. Go on out there. To save the life of the man I'm gunning for. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay, Randy, why not? Hi, this is Dennis James. To make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All brand. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. You see, Kellogg's All Brand is the reliable brand that millions depend on for the effectiveness they want. It's the real Battle Creek formula that brings you more brand bulk in every serving, more of the vital brand bulk that helps you keep regular. Kellogg's All Brand is also low in calories. And mighty pleasant tasting. You can trust Kellogg's for that. The crisp toasted shreds have the kind of good bran muffin flavor that most folks are partial to. So next time you are shopping, get Kellogg's All Bran, and you'll get reliability. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Bran. Reliability. <laughs> Maybe Randy Singer's alarm was uncalled for. All he had to do was get the Oklahoma City police on the phone, tell them to pick up Tony Valentine to keep Sergeant Mike Thomason away from him, and then arrange for Tony's extradition back to New York. And Thomason, off duty, acting on his own, couldn't do a thing about it. If, that is, if Tony stayed in Oklahoma City. And I didn't think he would. I thought he'd head for Overton, far away from Oklahoma City's jurisdiction, a mere pinpoint on the map that most likely wouldn't have a police department of its own. If Tony were there, if Mike were to find him there, nobody would ever see him again, would ever know what happened to him. Unless somehow I could get to Tony Valentine first. Okay, then, expense account item three is six fifty for a cab to the airport. Item four, eighty-nine fifty, plane fare. Oklahoma City, center of the mad rush for free prairie land back in 1899, where in one day, some 10,000 people staked their claims in newly opened territory. Now, it's a clean, modern city of something over 300,000, with skyscrapers crowding its central business district, and oil and gas wells crowding in around its edges, a city of iron and steel plants, Clothing, furniture factories, stockyards and meatpacking, oil and cotton processing, electrical equipment, and the gamut of recreational and cultural facilities, country clubs and fine homes. But despite the change in time zone, it was late afternoon when the plane set down at Will Rogers Field. And there I spent item five, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car, and I tore onto the town to police headquarters. No, Mr. Dollar, we haven't turned up a single lead on this Tony Valentine. 
I expect he must have just passed on through. Okay. Now, Captain, did you yourself talk to Lieutenant Singer of the New York Police Department? Yep. He told me about Mike Thomason. Sergeant Thomason. Has he been here? Have you seen him? Mrs. Dollar, he spent two solid days combing this town for Tony Valentine. And? Well, he's acting kind of unofficially, isn't he? He sure is. I suppose you can't exactly blame him. His own uncle getting murdered. And, of course, his not knowing it wasn't Valentine who did it. But what about Mike? Well, let's see. About 15, 20 minutes ago, he came in and told me that he was giving up around here. But that he had some other ideas on Valentine's possible whereabouts. Oh? Mm Mm-hmm. And that he was leaving town to follow him up. Leaving for where? Well, that he wouldn't say. Oh, fine. Except that it's way outside our bailiwick. That if any other authorities needed to be notified, he'd take care of such notification himself. Captain, how do I get to the town of Overton? Overton? A town? Well, <laughs> there's a kind of a railroad siding. Maybe a couple of sleeping cars for a section gang. And Where? Maybe an oil loading rig and a water tank. Where? Oh, I say it's about uh, 75, maybe 80 miles north, north and west of here. Okay. There's an old abandoned oil well there, too, and a shack to go with it. Yeah, well, thanks. Bleeding Heart Number One, they called it. What did you say? Well, I said they called yeah, it... Ble- bleeding Heart. A Valentine. And his name is Tony Valentine. You mean you think... No maybe wonder he, he picked it as a place to stash away some of his loot. Or maybe it was owned by his family. All right, Captain, thank you very much. You think maybe his folks own that well? Something like that? I'm thinking a lot of things. I headed north on 74, driving as fast as I dared. And then, a few miles after crossing the Cimarron River, I swung left onto a dirt road that was hard to navigate, even with good headlights. And finally, after crossing seemingly endless miles of barren prairie, I saw the light in a railroad shack at one side of a huge water tank and a cattle loading platform. I looked through the window. Inside the shack, sleeping sprawled over a sort of desk with a telegraph instrument on it, was an old man. Good evening. Howdy. Uh, Listen, I'm looking for a man. Uh, you, uh, the police or something? Would you like to see my credentials? Oh, well, uh, I Better know. still, I... look at this, this picture. Oh. Well, on the bottom here, it says New York Police That's Department. right. Well, have you seen this man around here? Well, yes, I have, son. When? Where is he now? Well, I've seen him just about sundown, heading over towards the old bleeding heart number one. Where's well, that? Why, anybody should want to monkey around that well, where is place. Where is it? I, huh? Oh, oh. Uh, just follow that road alongside the tracks for about two miles, and there you are. All right. Now listen to me and listen carefully. Uh, yes, sir. Has there been anybody else around here asking about this fellow in the picture? Mm, no, sir. Not that I know about. Now, you're sure of that? Well, that I am, sir. Okay. Now, there is another man looking for him. And he may come around here tonight. Watch out for him. He's a killer. Killer? That's right. Now, he may show you credentials that look as though he's from the New York Police Department. Don't you believe him? You you mean he's what you call a a phony? Now, you understand me? Don't believe anything he tells you. Oh, okay, son. And above all, do not, under any circumstances, let him know that you've seen the man in this picture around here. Well, now, look here. Unless you want to be a party to a murder. Oh. Oh, okay, son. I'll do anything you say. All right. Now, I'm going out there. You're not going anywhere. Look. He's he's got a gun. That's right. Either you make a move. I pull the trigger. Stop 
Have a commander, welcome aboard. Have a commander, welcome aboard. The cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Have a commander and see. The cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. And in commander, the tobacco is vacuum cleaned. Have a commander. Welcome aboard. Try new king-size Philip Morris Commanders made on a new machine, the Mark 8, that takes rich, full-flavored tobacco and gently vacuum cleans it. And the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Noticeably better. The cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. And in Commander, the tobacco is vacuum cleaned. Have a Commander. Welcome aboard. pretty obvious that the man standing there at the door, covering us for the police 38, was not Tony Valentine. It was also obvious that he didn't know who I was, and I knew better than to tell him. Once he realized I was there to keep him from finding Valentine, well, put it this way, there was a bad look in his eye, almost a mad look. And he held the gun, mine was still in my pocket. What's more, I knew better than to use it on a police officer when a hastily pulled shot might be a fatal one. By seeming only to shift the weight on my feet, I edged closer to the telegraph table with its old-fashioned heavy glass lamp on it. Down low! I, I didn't move. I mean you! Until I get used to the light in here and make sure. Just trying to relax. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and relax. You're not the punk I'm looking for. Now, oh, thanks. Now, if you'll just put down that gun... You'll try and jump me, that it? Tell me this, wise guy. You know who Tony Valentine is? Valentine? Look, I'm new around here. You know, just driving through. Yeah? When'd you get here? Just a couple of minutes ago. That, that, that's who, mister. That, that, that's who now. Yeah, old man. Well, do you know him? Uh, Valentine? Yeah, yeah. Tony Valentine. Yeah, look. Here's his picture. Well, I said, do you know him? No, no, sir. I, I know who you are. You're a killer. What are you talking about? And your name is Sergeant Mike Thomason. What? Who are you? I said, who are you? Come on, wise guy, talk. You're a killer. That's what you are, a killer. Shut up, you. That's why you come here with that gun, to kill somebody. Shut up. Now listen, wise guy. Oh, no, you don't. When he knocked down the old man, I pushed the lamp off the table. <laughs> Die for his knees. Are you dirty? A couple of those shots came far too close for comfort. One of them grazed the top of my head. I locked his gun hand under my arm and shoved a fist into his midsection and then came up to his chin with everything I had. After making sure the old man would recover, I got into my car and I drove out the road beside the railroad tracks. Thanks to the moonlight, I could see the oil derrick for the bleeding heart number one and the shack beside it in plenty of time. So I turned off the headlights and I drove cautiously to within about 500 yards of it. And I ditched the car in a gully and then quietly went the rest of the way on foot. The little building was nothing more than a tool shed and there was a lantern burning somewhere inside. Peering in through a dirty window, I could see Tony Valentine. He was on his knees, replacing a plank on the floor. And beside him was an open bag, and it was loaded with money. Slowly, carefully, I pulled out my gun, edged my way around to the door, and then kicked it open. Ah! Dollar! That's right, Tony. So this is where you hid away all your loot, huh? Johnny Dollar. Guess I should have known you'd be after me again. Yeah, you should have known. Got a gun? You know I never use no gun. All right now, Tony. And listen, Dollar. Listen about that killing back in New York. I know, Tony. I know all about it. Yeah, what do you know? I know Sandy Reinhardt did it. That's right. And the cops have nabbed him for it. And I'm clean. And I'm all right. You are? Well, sure, Dollar. Look, don't you see? I, I was afraid they'd catch me and burn me for it. It's the reason I come out here. Get everything I had so I could skip the country. Not a chance. What do you mean, not a chance? 
Think I'm going to give up easy and go back to New York with you just because you're holding a gun on me? You've got a choice. Oh, yeah? What is it? Go on back with me and without any trouble. Or I can leave you up to Mike Thomason. So who's Mike? Uh, Thomason? That killer cop? That's right. That man was his uncle. He thinks you killed him. But I didn't. Nothing you or I can tell him will ever convince him otherwise. And he's out here, Tony, gunning for you. I don't believe so it. So you have your choice. Go back with me and take whatever they hand you for the jailbreak and hold up. Or be shot down by Mike Thomas. Ah, uh, you're lying. You're trying to trick me. I knocked him out over at the railroad shack, but not for long, so we haven't much time. As a matter of fact, we haven't any time. The car out there. That is Mike Thomason. You, you got a gun. You got to stop him, Dollar. Do I? Look, you can see him in the moonlight. With that gun, you can nail him. Would you like to be the cop killer? Oh, no, no. Dollar, he'll come in here and kill me. Well, at this point, he might try to kill both of us. Well, what do we do? He's coming over right, here. Now, shut up, Tony, and be quiet. Or he'll know I'm in here with you. But unless you kill him first. I told you, who wants to be a cop killer? But I want to live. Well, so do I. If I could reach that lantern, knock it off the table under this oil-soaked floor without him seeing Okay, me. Valentine. I know you're in there. Come on out here with your hands up. Answer him. No. No, I'd do that. You'd kill me. That's right. Maybe I would. Now the lantern. What are you doing with that lantern? It's setting the place on fire. Now well, the joint's on fire. So now you've got a choice. You stay in there and burn up with it or come out here and take a bullet. Either way, Valentine, you're going to pay for killing that man back in New York. Now, Tony, listen to me. He doesn't know I'm here. Dollar. Go over there on that doorway. No, listen. Now, let him see you. He won't pull that trigger unless you try to make a break for it. But there's fire As long as he sees you, he won't see me go out through that back window. I hope. But there's fire. There's smoke. Get over there where he can see you. He'll kill me. There's fire. Knowing there wasn't a second to waste because of that fire, I plunged through the window into the night. I ran wide of the shed to get around in back of Mike, hoping and praying his whole attention would be on Tony inside. And it was until I tore into him with a flying foul. You again. It's all right, Mike. You knocked him out. Hey, you're okay, Dollar. Sure, I know. And, uh, Dollar, here, I... I guess you better keep his gun. Oh? Well, thanks, Tony. And you think maybe... Maybe me and you better start on back to New York? Before he comes to? Funny. I never did think to find out if Mike Thomason kept his job on the force after that little episode. Tony, of course, is back in the pen finishing out a somewhat extended term. Expense account total, including travel back for the two of us, $379.50. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. For next week... Strange vengeance for an even stranger crime. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddick, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in our cast were Bill Lipton as Tony Valentine, Larry Haynes as Randy Singer, Roger DeCoven as Mike Thomason, Arthur Cole as the old man, Mendel Kramer as the police captain, and Joseph Julian as Paul Ferris. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hanna speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.